Okay, unfortunately, we didn't record any of that earlier stuff. So All we're right. going to pick it up from where we are. All right. Okay, so for here, Matt, this is my one and this is my two. I'm going to actually uh, do this. Mass of one, temp final minus temp initial is equal to negative mass two, temp final minus temp initial. But here I have to put temp initial for one and temp initial for two because they're different initial temps, right? Right. What can we say about the final temp when we mix them? It's going to be the difference of the final minus the initial. I'm asking for the relationship between this final temp for this one and this oh. final temp for this one. Will um, they be two different temps or will they be at the same temp? They should be at the same temp. Right. Because the hot one, based on my hand here, and the cold one, based on my hand here, the cold will get hotter, the hot will get colder until they're the right. same. So here, I'm not going to put a final two, and I'm not going to put a final one. It's just TF. Okay. So 1M, M1, TF, minus M1, TI1, is equal to negative M2, TF, plus M2, TI2. And then I get M1, TF, plus M2, TF, is equal to positive M1, TI1, plus M2, TI2. And then I get TF is equal to M1, T1, TI1, plus M2, TI2, all over M1 plus M2. It's like an algebra nightmare. So here we have 156 grams times 22 degrees Celsius plus 85.2 grams times 95 degrees Celsius all over 241.2 grams. Let's see what we get. This is three, four, three, two degrees Celsius. The grams cancel. This is only good to the 34, unfortunately. Uh, eighty five point two times ninety five This is good to there, all divided by two forty one point two. And then divided by 241.2, I get 18.96. That can't be right. I goofed up somewhere.
Ah, here's where I goofed up. This is 8094, not uh, 1143. And we get our final temperature is 48 degrees Celsius. And remember how we said it should be closer to 22 than it should be to 95? Right. This is about 26 away from 22. And it's about 50 away from 95. So it is closer. All right, that was a uh, most interesting problem. There's a lot to that one. <laughs> Oops. Okay, but you see how uh, it kind of helped us to figure out that the answer should be between uh, 95 and 22. Yeah. When I, my first answer came out to be 18, which was less than 22. That basically says when you take a hot water and put it with the cold water, the cold water gets colder. Right. Which doesn't work. That doesn't make sense. Okay. So here, this is another problem, just like the one we did. So we're not going to do it. Okay. Because it would just take a lot of time. Okay, now here we have a, a piece of molybdenum. And it's 237 grams. And it's at 100 degrees Celsius. And we're going to make that point. It's dropped into 244 grams of water. And it's at 10 degrees Celsius. Now, what's going to happen is that these two will reach some sort of final temp. The metal will be the same temp as the water because of thermal equilibrium. And they tell us that that is 15.3 degrees Celsius. And they ask, what is the specific heat of molybdenum? So I'm going to show you how to do this problem two ways. The first way is this. We're going to calculate the energy absorbed by the water. So according to our diagram, we have 244 grams of H2O at 10 degrees Celsius that ends up as 244 grams of H2O at 15.3 degrees Celsius. So how do we calculate energy? Q equals C M, actually equals M cat. Now the mass of the water is 244 grams. The specific heat capacity of water is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. And the change in temp is 15.8 degrees Celsius minus 10 degrees Celsius. So if we do this in our heads, 
Do you agree that 15.8 minus 10 is close to six? Yeah. Six times 244 is kind of hard, but 244 times four is gonna be really close to a thousand, right? Yeah, right. So I think this is gonna be close to 1500, but less than that. Now this, the difference is 5.8, but the problem is it's only good to the six. This is good to the ones, this is good to the 10th, so this is only good to the ones. So we get 1415.2 calories. And unfortunately, this is only good to the thousands. <laughs> kind of sucks. Two, Q1 plus Q2 is equal to zero. So, and this is Q1 is gonna be the water. Q2 is gonna be the metal. So the Q of the metal is equal to negative Q of the water. So we just figured that the water absorbed 1,415 calories, right? Right. So that energy into the water, into means endothermic, means positive. That means the metal is negative 1415.2 calories. That means the metal is releasing energy. Does that seem to be the case when we put hot metal into the water that the metal's releasing energy? Yes. Okay. Now the next step is this. So I'm going to put three over here. We use Q of the metal is equal to specific heat capacity of the metal, mass of the metal, change in temp of the metal. So that means the specific heat capacity of the metal is Q of the metal, mass of the metal, over change in temp of the metal. I don't know why I put that in parentheses, but I did. <laughs> Okay, Q of the metal is negative 1415.2 calories. Mass of the metal is 237 grams. Change in temp of the metal. Well, it says that the metal starts at 100 degrees Celsius and ends at 15.8. Oh, that's not what I wanted. But so notice, I put the 15.8 first. Hold on just a second. I have a teacher calling me. You bet. I'll uh, push this on pause. You're going to remind me to record, right? Okay. Okay, so while you were away, I did do this one thing here where I rewrote this problem, but here I wrote negative 84.2 because the temperature difference is a negative 84.2 swing. That is to say that the metal cooled down. Okay. Now what's nice about this is you have a negative in the bottom and a negative in the top. What's that gonna do to the overall sign? Make it positive. Right, and that's what we want. And I get an answer of 0 0.07 calories oh this is supposed to be grams do you see that here yeah gram degree celsius so that's our answer Okay. One way to do it, kind of do it in three steps, right? Right. So let me show you another way to do it real quick. We can do this. Q1 plus Q2 is equal to zero. All of the heat, all of the heats add up to zero. 
So we can say Q of the H2O plus Q of the molybdenum is equal to zero. Now Q equals M cat, right? Right. So that means Q of the, I'm gonna call this W for water. And I'm gonna call this uh, MO for molybdenum. So I've got here, I've got mass of the water, specific heat capacity of water, change in temp of the water, plus mass of the molybdenum, specific heat capacity of the molybdenum, change in temp of the molybdenum is equal to zero. So do you see how I went from here to here? Yeah. Okay, so what are we solving for? We're solving for C molybdenum. So I'm gonna have mass of the molybdenum, specific heat capacity of the molybdenum, change in temp of the molybdenum is equal to negative mass of the water, change in temp of the water, and we'll actually have specific heat capacity of water, change in temp of the water. So do you see how I went from here to here? Yeah. Now I'm gonna go that the specific heat capacity of molybdenum is equal to negative mass of the water, specific heat capacity of water, change in temp of the water, all over mass of the molybdenum, change in temp of the molybdenum. Okay. Now, if I make a little list up here, the mass of the water is 244 grams, right? Right. The specific heat capacity of water is one calorie per gram degree Celsius, something you should memorize. And it's not too bad to memorize except for the units. Change in temp of the water. Well, it starts at 10 and it ends at 15.3. So we're gonna say 15.3 degrees Celsius minus 10 degrees Celsius. And isn't that equal to 5.3 degrees Celsius? Yeah. This is only good to the five though, because the 10 is only good to the ones. The mass of the molybdenum is 237 grams. And the change in temp of the molybdenum is going to be 15.3 degrees Celsius minus 100, which is 84.7 degrees Celsius. And that's a negative. Okay, so now when I plug these numbers in, negative mass of the water, 244 grams, Specific heat capacity water, one calorie per gram degree Celsius. Change in temp of the water is positive 5.3 degrees Celsius divided by mass of the molybdenum, 237 grams, and negative 84.7 degrees Celsius. So if we plug all these numbers in, let's see what we get. We have 0 0.06 uh, calories per gram degree Celsius. And this agrees with the previous problem because I found out I made a mistake in the previous problem. But there we go. That's how you do it. I think this is easier. Uh, on the bottom underneath 0 0.06, that's grams per calorie or per Celsius, right? Yep. Okay. I couldn't yeah. tell if it was grams or a five. <laughs> now the, like, wait, where'd the five come from? Yeah, the problem I made mis a mistake in before is that this should have been 15.3, not 15.8. Okay. So that changes things a little bit over here and the problems would agree with the same answer.
to 15.3 and I used um, 15.8. Okay, so I like this approach better where you simply start with this. And the reason I like this approach better is if you have five things that are touching, then you have Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4 plus Q5 is equal to zero. Right. Whereas if you uh, do it this way, you have all sorts of little things that you don't know really how they connect yet. And right. you can see we did use this, but we didn't start off with it. Okay. I'm going to put that away. Yep. Yep, go. Yeah. Now, this one, it says the energy required to melt one gram of ice at zero degrees Celsius is uh, 333 joules. That number is called the heat of fusion. So heat of fusion is the amount of energy required to melt one gram of something. Each substance has a different heat of fusion. For instance, this much energy would not melt a gram of iron. Okay. Now, if one ice cube has a mass of 62.0 grams and a tray contains 16 ice cubes, what quantity of energy is required to melt a tray of ice cubes to form liquid water at zero degrees Celsius? So we would say 16 ice cubes. Actually, I'm sorry, we're gonna start with one tray times 16 cubes per one tray, right? Times 62.0 grams per cube and then times 333 joules per gram. And that would give us the amount of energy required to melt. And I get three 0 0.30 times 10 to the five joules. And here, this is infinity zig figs. This is infinity. This is three zig figs. And this is three zig figs. Any questions on this one? Nope. Now notice it says, how much energy is required to melt a tray of ice cubes to form liquid water at zero degrees Celsius? Mm -hmm. When you look at ice, and we start here at negative 20 degrees Celsius, the ice will warm, actually negative 20 degrees Celsius here, the ice will warm until you get to zero degrees Celsius. Once it gets to zero degrees Celsius, the temperature does not change. And the reason it does not change is that you have water and ice stuck together. And because of thermal equilibrium, they stay at zero. Okay. So this is the melting process right here. And this is warming. Ice can be less than zero degrees Celsius and it can warm up without melting. And then what happens is once all of the ice melts, it'll then warm up until it gets to 100 degrees Celsius. 
And when it warms up, what will happen to it when it gets to 100? It'll stay the same. Nope, it'll boil. Oh, I knew that. <laughs> so when it boils, the steam is 100 degrees Celsius. And so is the water. So here, you're going to have water and steam. And then once all of the water has turned into steam, then it warm, then the steam warms. And um, the curve actually looks more like this. Where this plateau here is really long. Okay. So here you only have steam. Here you have steam and water. Here you only have water. And here you have ice and water. And here you have only ice. And this is used to explain why steam burns are so bad. This bottom is energy. So when you go this way, it's endothermic. It takes energy to take ice and turn it into water, water, turn it into steam and so forth and so on. So why are steam burns so bad uh, compared to boiling water burns? Uh, for instance, you know, when I'm cooking, I remove a lid, the steam hits my arm and it hurts right away, right? Right. Um, I can pull a hot dog out of boiling water, no problem. Because the steam is a lot hotter than the water. That's what you would think, but that's not the real answer. Oh. The real answer is that when the steam hits you, the steam cools down until you have water at about body temp. So the steam cools down from here to here. Look at how much energy that gives off. A lot. Now, when you have boiling water, the water gives off that much energy to your hand. Okay. So why does steam give you such bad burns? And the answer is because the steam turns into water on you. Okay. So here the steam is turning into water on you. So, of course, the way to avoid a steam burn is don't let the water condense on you. Right. And the way you do that is you maintain a body temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, which is impossible because yeah. you would. <laughs> if you can't do that, avoid steam. All right. The so steam burns are really bad, not because of the hot temp. Steam burns are bad because of condensation. Okay. And you've noticed that, you know, when you put your arm over steam, your arm gets wet, right? Oh, yeah. And it hurts a lot. It does. <laughs> it's a condensation. All right, let's see if we have time for one more. Oh, yeah, we have time for this one. The screen is a little blurry. Let me see what I can do about that. Does that help at all? Nope, didn't change at all. <laughs> oh, there it goes. I'm now making it larger. There we go. Maybe. How's that? I can read it better now. I can do an autofocus, but when I do the manual focus, it, it never works. Right? So if I lose the remote, it's kind of like I got to throw away the TV. Oh, yay. Okay, I think uh, we're going to have to work with that. So this okay. one is one of those problems that I just described to you. We're going to raise the temperature of 454 grams of tin from room temp to its melting point. So here, if we kind of draw the graph and we draw the energy diagram, and we start at room temp, which is 25.0 degrees Celsius, 
we're going to go to 231.9 degrees Celsius, and the tin is going to warm up. Now, at 239, 31.9 degrees Celsius, it starts to melt, and that's when you get the flat. And then it says it melts, and then it's done melting. So we want to calculate this energy, and we want to calculate this energy. Now, this is the energy of heating, and this is the energy of melting. So here, there's a change in temp, and here, the change in temp is equal to zero. So do you see I'm putting change in temp is not equal to zero? Yeah. And here, change in temp is equal to zero? So here's how you do these types of problems. If the change in temp is equal to zero, you use the following. You uh, take the heat of fusion times the mass, or you take the heat of vaporization times the mass. Fusion is for melting, vaporization is for boiling. Okay. Now, Oh, I'm sorry. This is for when the change in temp is equal to zero. My bad. When the change in temp is not equal to zero, you use Q is equal to uh, M cap. So those are the two equations you kind of want to remember. And the way I kind of remember it is that uh, really for uh, Another way to think about this is this one is called a change in state. Because you're going from either a liquid to a solid or a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas or a gas to a liquid. So change in state. So I'm going to write this out again. So we have two types of problems. We have a change in state. The change in temp is equal to zero. And to calculate Q, you use heat times mass. And then you have no change in state. So something is just warming or cooling. And here, the change in temp is not equal to zero. So you use Q equals uh, M cat. So if we take a look at our two problems here, we're going to melt 440, uh, 54 grams of tin. So that's the mass. And here they say the heat of fusion is 59.2 grams or joules per gram. So the grams cancel. And you can tell this is going to be a large number, right? Because when you have 454 times 59.2, yeah. it's going to be huge. And um, I get uh, 26876.8 joules. Now, does that seem about right for these two numbers? Yeah. Well, the way I would think about it is I would think, well, this is really like 60. And I'm going to pretend that this is um, 500. Right. So when I do 60 times 500, there's two zeros in 500 and one in 60. Right. So that, okay. I'm going to do five times six, which is 30, and add those three zeros. 
Yeah. So I get 30,000 and that's close to 30,000. Okay, now here we're gonna use Q is equal to 454 grams. They tell us the specific heat capacity is 0.227 joules per gram. And remember, in this case, I'm allowing you guys to write degrees Celsius instead. Okay. And then we're going to multiply by the change in temp. And the change in temp is going to be 231.9 degrees Celsius minus 25.0 degrees Celsius. So we always do final minus initial, and that's the final temp. That's the initial temp. So let's take a look at this one. Here, this is 206.9. I'm going to put that right there. And the way I would estimate this is, would you agree that this is about uh, one fourth, 0.227? Yeah. So I can do one fourth of 454, or I can do one fourth of 206. And I don't like either. You know what I'm gonna do? <laughs> I'm gonna do 200 times 454 is like 200 times 500, which gives me six four zeros, right? 500 and four zeros and 500,000. Yeah, so 10 plus four more zeros, one, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna do one fourth of that. What's one fourth of a hundred thousand? Um, half is 50. What's half of 50? 25. So it'd be. So this should be about 25,000. And yeah. I get 21322.7. I don't know why it took me so long to figure out a fourth of a hundred. <laughs> yeah. That's well, like basic right there. <laughs> it's the of 100,000. And once it gets to be 100,000, you get scared. My brain just totally did flip flops. Like I know that, but why? <laughs> okay. So this one is good to there. This one is good to there. And when we add these two numbers together, we get. So Q plus Q, Q for the change in state for Q plus the heating is equal to 48199.5 joules. And we have to round to there. So we get 48200 joules. So I'd expect to see basically all of this work here. Okay. And this puts it as set at puts us at half pass and I think we're done. Alrighty. So a portion of this got recorded. Uh, if anyone calls in this afternoon, I'll probably be doing the same problems again. And okay. that portion will be recorded. Okay. Tomorrow's lab is gonna be uh, a Beers Law lab. You can expect the exam, the next exam to be the Monday after spring break. Okay. The quiz is going to be the same day, but I'm going to make it available the Sunday in, in, in advance. So it'll be Sunday and Monday. Normally I have the exam and the quiz the day before spring break begins. Right. But I'm going to let you guys have spring break to either ignore the material. No, bad. Or to learn it better. Actually considering my last grade. No, I'd, I'd like to use that time to study. <laughs> I'm going to leave it up to you guys. I don't plan on doing any work over spring break. Okay. Okay. Well, Thanks thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.